So, uh, so that's the title of the whole lectures, and, and, and I want to talk maybe for orientation. We've been talking about this. What's, what the word quantum here means you study. So this means that you study the k theory of maybe a covariant with respect to automorphisms of x of some moduli space which parameterizes maybe, I don't know, something like curves in x. In x in algebra, right. So this is what's called quantum K theory, or maybe roughly called quantum K theory. The meaning of the word quantum here is entirely different. I mean, mathematicians have the tendency to call quantum whatever, whatever has any connection to, to theoretical physics. <laughs> so, so, so if you, if you think the, the origin of this quantum rules had to do like spin chains and things like this, so it's a, it's a, so, uh, so, you know, like maybe, you know, like, like spin chains. Yeah, and then people were, uh, were uh, this, like a spectra were understood in terms of, well, we'll get to that point. Anyway, quantum here means something entirely different. And what's a quantum group? Maybe I should, despite, uh, despite Raphael's being here, maybe I should explain what this is. <laughs> no, maybe, is that, is that supposed, is that the... Uh, is that, so, uh, so if I have a, is that not working the mic or? Oh, it's working oh, the mic. Sorry. So, um, so if I have a, a group, first of all, a group, G group. To a group, I can associate its group algebra. So I don't know, let's say with C coefficients. So just are just linear combinations of elements of the group you multiply. If, you, if G is a Lie group, you can make this to be distribution on your Lie group, but let's say it's a finite group. So it's, and so this is, of course, an algebra, so the group algebra. And since it's a group algebra, so by monotonicity, this is, you know, this is somehow says more than just being an algebra. And so how do we, how do we quantify the group algebra being more than an algebra? Right? The group algebra possesses, possesses a structure that the general algebra would not possess. So if we denote this A, so what's, a, what's, special about, what's special about group algebras and such? Is that a group, representations of a group, you can tensor multiply. If you have one, so if this group act, acts, in, acts in, in one representation and acts in another representation, it also acts in the tensor product. So if I have, a, if I have an algebra and I have a mod, A module and another A module, there's no natural way to make the tensor product on A module. What you need is you need the map to have a, a tensor product on A module. You need a map denoted delta that goes from the algebra to what naturally acts on the tensor product, namely the A tensor A. Okay. Which a general algebra doesn't possess, but a group algebra does. Because, well, well how, a group acts in, how a group acts in a tensor product? Well, it acts in each factor. So it means, means an element G goes to G tensor G and then extends it linearly to the group algebra. And it's an algebra homomorphism. So this is an algebra with such structures called bialgebra. And, ho and, 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 and group, in fact, has something more stronger. It's not only, not only, not only, uh, not only the, uh, uh, it has not only multiplication, it has also inversion, in like, like an inverse element of the group. What, is it, what does it mean in terms of, what does it mean in terms of, uh, what does it mean in terms of, uh, Representations and in terms of representation, that if you have a, a, a module, then you can use you can use the inversion. How to say? How do we? How does an element? So if I have a group element, no, some G acts by some matrix T of G in representation V, then how it's going to act in the dual in the dual space of V? It's going to act by the transpose inverse.
means means you can make you can make not only the tensor probe but also the dual things to be to be G modules, and this means what you need is you need a, a map S again A goes to A, which is now algebra anti-homomorphism. which um, in this case sends G to G inverse, extended linearly. And these two satisfy uh, an obvious identity, which is, which is to say, so what this identity says, that G times G inverse equals 1 equals G inverse times G. And so what this identity says in terms of algebras is that if I take, if I take the coproduct, it's called coproduct. If I take the coproduct, and I then I apply the antipode. This is called this called coproduct. It's called antipode. If I apply antipode in either of the factors, so if I take tensors, and then I multiply this back. So what's what's the what is it going to do? How this thing is going to act? What's this operation? It's going to act on an element of my group algebra. An element of my group algebra is a sum, some sum with some coefficient, C G times G, some sum like this. So what's going to happen is I this delta will make G tensor G. Then if I apply antipode, this would go to this would, you know, this would be G times G inverse. And then I multiply, then this would go to so what's it going to be? So one means the identity in the group. You go right like this. So then this will be summation of C G times the identity in the group. Usually we write usually usually we write coefficient in front of an element, but here I put post compass because the way to the way to think about it. Is this is this is like an integral? So if you have a, you take you take you know, like a like a formal linear combination, you take the sum of the coefficients. This is called the co-unit. This is an integral. It's like an integral called co-unit. And the reason it is a co-unit that this operation is the unit for the for the co-multiplication. Because if you go if you go right if you go g tensor g and then you take the sum coefficient of the second factor, you're going to get that density. And this is the actual unit. That's the, that's uh, so a, so this, uh, and you can show, in fact, the same, the same in the group, that if you have a, the same as in the group, that if you have a, you know, like if you have multiplication and it's uh, bijective, then, then, you know, then, how to say, there's the inverse and so on so forth. So, so then, so in fact, this, this, this structure is, is in some sense secondary. If, if antipode exists, then it is unique. So, so you can. Uh, it is this. This mo This is the most important thing. But these two, two things together, with the with the appropriate axiom, the whole thing. This is is called Hopf algebra. And the reason it's called Hopf algebra is because Hopf uh, showed early on that the cohomology ring of a Lie group is a Hopf algebra, and this he showed to, to use to prove that. To prove that it has to be exterior algebra and finitely many generators. So, so now what's a what's a quantum group? So, for, for before we get to the quantum group, is the different is 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 we would like to talk about infinitesimal version of this. So infin, so. Infinitesimal version, where where a would be the universal enveloping of some Lie algebra G, it's a Lie algebra. Now the co-product I get by differentiating this, this uh, differentiating this map, I get the co-product. So if I have a delta xi, xi tensor one plus one tensor xi, antipode is minus xi. And then a, a quantum group, well, there are several, quant several notions of quantum group. The one we want to know is UQ of G, 
will be a certain Hopf algebra deformation of So it's not it's not so interesting to deform to deform this as an algebra because because uh, yeah. this is an algebra that will be pretty much isomorphic to a deformed thing. But the hope the structure of the hope algebra will be deformed, and most importantly, this this thing the the new coproduct which is co commutative in this case means means if I take if I take this coproduct and I flip the two tensor factor I get the exact same thing. So this is not, will be no longer, be no longer. No. So how do you, how do you construct, so, so how do you construct such things and how you construct their representations is there's, there's somehow two schools of thought about it. And uh, one, of course, goes back to Drinfeld, who was defining such objects by generators and relations. And another, which, which in, some sense, in some sense precedes, in some sense follows the work of Drinfeld, is because these things originate, these structures originated, like I said, they, they originated in in certain specific, exactly solvable one plus one dimensional models, some certain spin chains. And, and so this, in particular, there's a philosophy that, that goes back to Fadeev, Rashtikhin, and Dr. John. That goes that the philosophy says that this is, there's, there's a, if I, uh, if I may be forgiven for maybe giving you a slightly non-technical description of it, there's a, there's a, a, a chicken and an egg relation, chicken and an egg relation between, between two following things. You can, you can start, you can start with, with the algebra. You can start with the algebra U, Q, and G. You can define it by generators and relations. Or, you c and, then, and then out of this, you may compute some object that, that you know, called an R matrix. This is an operator acting in a tensor product of two G modules. Or maybe it's taking, <coughs> sort of, it's not exactly right for what I wrote, but it's. For any two G modules, you get an operator that, so in fact, what it does, it quite precisely it does it. This sends this to them multiplied in. So you see, if, if the if the co-multiplication is not co-commutative, then the, the order of the tensor product matters. And so and so you'd like to have that. So in particular. The, the, so to speak, the, the map of teaching linear algebra, which takes the two tensors and permute, will not be a, a homomorphism, or UQ of G homomorphism. And so there's a relation, so what I'm going to explain, there's a relation between, between such object and such object, and I said somehow, I mean, a, a, a point of view which is, of course, I mean, the original point of view of Drinfeld and, and, and mostly adopted in the literature is that you start with this object and you produce with this object. But, but, but for us, for geometrically, it in fact, it's much easier to start. It, it is proves to be easier to start here and then reconstruct this. So now, what's this R matrix? Well, the R matrix is really is uh, you know what do you think it might be? If it's a, if it's if it's if if the tensor product, if the tensor product, if you take the tensor product one way and the tensor product the another way, well, you think well, how can this be different modules? Like. <laughs> There's like no way they can be different. I mean, I apologize. This is this is not a this is not the precise technical. The precise technical statement is for most modules, while of course they're not visibly isomorphic, for, for a group, 
for if you have a Degas group, then of course the tensor product in either, in either order is visibly isomorphic modules. This will be not visibly isomorphic, but it will be still isomorphic. There will be non-trivial, there will be a non-trivial, so there will be non-trivial isomorphism that establishes this as an isomorphism of UQ G modules. And if there's something like this for, for generic modules, then of course it have, you, you, can, you can apply it to the free module and get it as, a, as a, some action, in fact, action given by an action. So it's given by an action of some universal element. R add in some completion of my algebra tensor algebra. Right? And if you, if you if you can do it for a module, you should be able to do it for a free module. If you can do it for a free module, it means there's some universal thing that works. And so uh, so then uh, uh, and, and so what, what properties does it, have to, does it have to satisfy? It has to satisfy the following properties. That of course, if I have a tensor product of three things, then I can permute it, I can permute it in the other order, in, 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 in two different ways, right? The braid relation. And so then you can ask, what's the relation between, if you permute them in two different ways, the two different ways is I can permute them like this. Uh, like this. And then you can ask, what's the relation between these two things? Of course, this is now, they both, they both, intertwiners between the actions. So in principle, they could differ by a central, by an element of the central. So you can, you can study, it could be the case that the product of this three equals the product of this three up to some central element. But in fact, in nature, what happens somehow? The R, mat the R matrices that appear in nature, in fact, these two things are just equal. And that, this is known as the young box circle. And how going from the young box to equation, so suppose, suppose now you, you lost the sight of the chicken. The chicken ran away. But you, you, it left you with the egg. It, get, it left you with the collection of this, maybe you call it R12. It, it left you with the collection of, of these operators for, for a bunch of vector spaces that satisfy this condition. How do you go back and reconstruct, and reconstruct the uh, and reconstruct the action. Well, there's a highbrow and a lowbrow approach to this. The highbrow approach would say that that a collection, a collection of such things will give you will give you a tensor category, and that tensor category will there'll be a representation of a certain Hopf algebra. But the lowbrow thing is that if I have an operator, so now let's say if I have an operator R acting in a tensor product of two things. And what I can do is I can take, take matrix elements, so matrix elements in V1 give me operators in V2. So for every matrix, so for every, so if I have a collection of vector spaces, means for every matrix element in every one of these vector spaces, I get an operator in any other one. So I have a map that clearly gives me. And, and what's beautiful about young boxer equation is that young boxer equation will tell you how these operators commute. Because 
Because suppose I want to act in the first space. So this one you call them, one you call auxiliary, and one you call so this is called in 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 the in this language of uh, of, uh, of spin chains, and why this is called auxiliary space. Now auxiliary, how do I spell it? something? Is, it, is that, that close enough? And this is called the physical space. So now suppose, now suppose, uh, uh, what shall we say? Shall we say three is auxiliary, three is physical, and one and two are auxiliary? So, so here would be this will be the physical. So this will be the physical thing, and this would be an auxiliary space. So three will be the physical space. And one and two is the auxiliary space. And see what happens is that if I if I act in the auxiliary space by my R matrix, in the physical space they 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 they're put in the opposite order. So the Young Baxter equation itself tells you how to commute this operator, tells you what the commutation relation between these operators is. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. Of course, these operators need, need not be all linearly independent or algebraically independent. It could be, I mean, this is a question of, but this is a question of like a classical, it's, it's a question of like a classical invariant theory. It's not a question of non-commutative algebra. Non-commutative algebra already solved. There could be further relation along this, I mean, just, this, this just the R matrix can satisfy some algebraic relations. But that's, that's, that's a separate question. So the particular Lie algebras we will be looking at, they're not, they have a further structure. Mm. So the, yeah. the, uh, the hot algebra that comes out is the of operators indexed by... Um, it's generated, so the generators there are are, uh, so you have a map. In other words, what you have is a map. So you have, you have, so you have a, a collection of this vector space. You have a map from the from the direct sum of like matrix elements of endomorphisms of each vi. And this goes a map to this EQ. And these are the generators. They satisfy. They said they commute as in the young Baxter equation. They can may further satisfy. Some algebraic relation, but that, that's okay. Okay, so elements of UQG in this representation are, are positive or something on beta. Is it the families of of uh, of, of um, linear transformations on, on B2? No, I'm just saying so this is well. No, for every for every matrix element of every one of them. You get some generator of this, okay. and the commutation relation between those already given to you by the young Baxter equation. Okay. This, this may, like I said, this may, this, this, they may also satisfy further relations. But this is a question about what, what, what relation this R matrix is also satisfying. This is a typical, this is a question of like invariant theory. And the basic, the basic relation, how to commute to such operators, you already know. So we'll, we'll see an example in a second. It's kind of, it's kind of quite neat, yeah. So the particular, the particular, uh, so the particular Lie algebra we, we will be looking for. for us, for us the Lie algebra G. We will not be so. We will be not looking at Lie algebra just by itself. We'll be looking at head of some other Lie algebra. So, which is, which is, uh, which is uh, some Lie algebra tensor just polynomials in one variable. So, in other words, it's a function on on a torus, on one-dimensional torus, with values in G, with pointwise brackets. This is Lie algebra. This Lie algebra has an automorphism, which just sends, which just rescales. It's a function on so it starts with an automorphism that rescales, that rescales that 
tensor to add another u tensor. And this, this will be a posterior, this will lift, this will deform to an automorphism of C star. So this is down at u acting on my, 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 my uq of g hat also. By the way, there's of course an additive version of this, which is which is sometimes easier to as a first if you first time see it, sometimes it's easier to think about additive version where where you take polynomials not instead of instead of Laurent polynomials, you take ordinary polynomials, and then the additive group acts by sending t to t plus u. Well, this is and so this will this this makes sense. Then 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 any representation, we can we can precompose with this automorphism and denote it like this. So this is V. It's a representation precomposed with this automorphism. And so then we can ask about the R matrix between two such things. Now each one. This is called the smell or the spectral parameter in this language. You can ask for this. And this will be now, since this is this is supposed to be an R matrix, which will now depend on this ratio of these two things. Acting here. And this would be it depends on the ratio because this is this is a, the simultaneous thing is an automorphism, and in interesting cases this will be a rational function. Of u one over c two, or in this case, in the additive case. In the additive case, it will be r of u1 minus u2, so rational function of the difference. And, and to see somehow to see examples is this. Maybe I'll write. And then we'll sat satisfy the Young-Baxter equation in the form r1 to u1 over u2, blah, 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 equals, you know, 1, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, u1, over u2. To see examples of such solutions, it, it's, so I'll write an example for, for, so here I'll write an example for SL2 hat in a second. First, maybe let me write example for the additive example. For, for so this is for this will be for u q of s l two hat the more the, the more basic example is what's called the Yangen of g l and hat Yangen of g l n so this is this will be a matrix R acting in n dimensional representation I mean acting in you know, somehow this matrix will be equal one this is this is Yang's so so this is the one that, that is the, the Yang-Baxter. So Yang was the one who wrote this matrix in like, I don't know, late 50s. So one plus permutation over u, acting in Cn, tensor Cn. Solve this equation. And I want to, and uq is still too. Maybe I'll write this acting in just C2 tensor C2. And then it's the, the way it's going to look like is, is this would be, so there's a, a, the space, maybe if you have a, if C2 has a basis, I don't know, like up and down, or 0 or 1 or something has a basis, maybe call E0, E1. So then the matrix will have a block form where this is one, this is something, this is one, and this is this is the vector e naught tensor e naught, this is the vector e one tensor e one, 
here. And the interesting block is the block is the block A uh, looks something like this, one over maybe this A roof of U times Q, and here uh, like A roof of U, A roof of Q. Something like that. And now, so how do you do with this? Now, when you take the matrix coefficients, you also take the coefficients of u. Right? I mean, when you take, now you have a map not just for matrix coefficients, but also at each matrix coefficient is a function. And so that function you expand in some region and take coefficients of that. So you indeed get a f uh, you indeed get an algebra that looks like, like loops into something else. Is that, that clear? I mean, try this in this example. See what's going on. So, so for example, here, if we, take, if we take just this particular matrix and this particular representation, what's going to happen? The matrix coefficient of 1, 2, what's 1, 1, 2? This operator is E, I, J, I apologize, I write it in matrix union so as if it was a linear algebra class, it's something like this. So if you take the matrix coefficient, you get exactly the matrix unit there. And it's only one over U coefficient that's non zero, all the other, in this representation, all other things die. But if you, if you, if you, if you move your representation, if you take this R of U, and, 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 and shift u, you know, plus some constants, then of course this, this expansion will be non-trivial and then all the higher things in the Yangon will act non-trivial. So, in other words, the, this is the, uh, in some sense why, why I love this particular approach is that it, it's somehow synthetic in the sense that you don't have to list the generators. You just list essentially one object, one matrix, one, one operator. And, and it's very convenient because most Lie algebras, well, the Lie algebras of like UQ of JLN had had, they're, they're almost finely generated. They're not, not quite, but pretty close. But most things you construct like this are, you know, are not finely generated objects. So if you want, <laughs> if you want to do it by generators and relations, that, that, would be, that, would be, that would be a long list of things. Right? Because, because the, the, for, I mean, they're not finely generated for the obvious reason that the operators we're going to write down, they'll be operators in infinite dimensional spaces. And so... Mm -hmm. Well, we won. So, so, uh, so maybe then I have to you know, somehow summarize this discussion to something, something that resembles uh, the last 15 minutes of the last lecture. Uh, in that, uh, where, we, where we left off, uh, where we left off uh, at the end of, 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 of last lecture is we were looking at the following geometry. We were looking at geometry which looked like A, in this case, A2 surface cross just C. So this is a toric geometry in which, in which, uh, which toric polygon looks something like this. And we were looking at, um, monomial ideals in this toric, you know, toric, toric, toric ideals that look like, I mean, like some pile of boxes here, and then pile of boxes there, pile of boxes there. They connect, and they end on three given two-dimensional partitions. This is a tensor we wish to understand. 
Now, this, this three labels, the lambda, mu, nu, they really correspond to three, three, you know, these three partitions correspond to, to some partition you place at the torus fixed point of your A2 surface. So this index lambda mu nu, this is really a vector, so it's a vector. A vector in the equivalent K theory of the Hilbert scheme of points of A2 surface. This is its intrinsic meaning is this. In other words of saying we had we had some moduli space of three-dimensional things that map to two-dimensional thing and we were pushing forward our particular sheaf and we got we got an element here. Now this object here is an example of so this is this this is all going to fall into some general theory. So this is an example of a Nakajima variety. In this case, it corresponds to Nakajima variety is indexed by quivers. And the ones, this one, is corresponds to the quiver, the affine A2 quiver. And what's, what's this picture is, it, it's a picture of a, of, of a, of a rational curve, a non-compact rational curve, I mean, how to say it. Picture of C, picture of C mapping to my Nakajima variety. This map has certain singularities corresponding. I mean, no, don't worry about it now, but but maybe rational map. Map with a certain singularity it doesn't doesn't matter for us not now. I'm just saying I'm just saying that this the the to have a, a sheaf a one-dimensional sheaf on on a threefold fiber on certain surfaces is the same as to map the base. I mean, this, the base of this vibration to to the Hilbert scheme of the fiber. And similarly, similar model of power can be set for general Nakajima variety. And so, and for general Nakajima variety, you can construct, one can construct. For general Nakajima variety. In this kind of slightly lengthy work with Dalvish Mollick, we constructed some, some, you know, some kind of geometric construction of our matrices. Which, 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 which give you then by, by this idea of Rashidik and Taktajan, give you a, a structure of UQ <coughs> of certain G hat modules, where, where certain G hat modules uh, on things like this, this becomes a module, right? I mean, we have our matrices, means, means every, one, every one of the spaces by construction becomes a module over certain things. So this thing becomes such a module. And, and well, this, this the, maybe to, to, to how this compares with work of Nakajima is that G hat in principle contains this G Katsumudi of Nakajima. This is Nakajima constructed an action of G Katsumudi. And, and the relation is like this is that so if your quiver is of finite type, so such as, for example, Nakajima varieties of a finite type, there are things like cotangent bundle to Grassmannian, so cotangent bundle to more general homogeneous space, and so on and so forth. So for, for, for ADE quivers, these are quivers of finite type, this G hat equals G Katsumadi. For the affine ADE, this G hat is something like, is is to Katsumudi is like is like G L N hat. So is like G L. No, sorry, G. This here. The hat comes. 
head, there's one more head at the end. It's like GLN head containing SLN head. This is Katsmudi. Mm -hmm. This is Katsmudi inside of this. And of course, for a while beyond that. Otherwise, much bigger. I'm very optimistic about what uh, Rafael and I were discussing about that. I think it's much bigger. So much bigger, much bigger. But anyway, we're in this situation right now because our quiver is of a fine type. And so, and so, and so how do you now, what finally comes, how do you actually characterize this tensor? So this tensor is, so this thing is, is a solution of a certain Q difference equation. Maybe Q is bad notation. So like Q already used for something else. So um, let's say let's say there is a, a torus action here with weight T. So then T difference equation. Equation that goes back to Heine, I think. I mean, this is very it, it, it's <laughs> super confusing, yeah. So this is, this is, I mean, of course the word, the, the Q is used for mathemat in mathematics for all sorts of things. And here's a, is a, here the variable by which you shift is the current weight of that direction. And Q is the weight, so, so this is somehow the two things, how the T and Q play here. Q is the, is this, this is, this is, the surface is symplectic, and the current weight of that symplectic form is Q. And the current weight of the transverse direction is, is, that, is where the equation comes from. And so, and so this equation, this equation generalizes, oh, well, I'm not going to, yeah, well, you know, in the five, it's last five minutes of the last lecture, I'm going to go write this equation is, uh, uh, but, it generalizes, which generalizes. I'm just going to write this thing for the Yangian. For the Yangian, uh, what's known the Casimir connection. And then that's a theorem, so it's, it's not a... So in cohomology, that theorem you can write in this short... You can find this in the short announcement uh, Davish and I wrote. But uh, uh, this, uh, but that, this I believe, is the theorem in K-theory, too. So just maybe theorem star. So uh, Casimir connection. So this is... Uh, and, and how you write this. So you start with the Lie algebra. So your Lie algebra, maybe I'll, okay, there's a Lie algebra, there's space here. Lie algebra has a Cartan subalgebra, which is just H2 of your variety. And it has, uh, and it has then, then, then the roots, some root subalgebra. They don't have to be, they're no longer one dimensional. And these roots naturally sit inside the homology group. And, um, uh, and and the way you write the Casimir connection is that so this is so this is a you know, vector, maybe I'll call it psi. And so now in cohomology, this would be this would be I'll have, I need to take some logarithm of that. So maybe I'll take it exponential of epsilon. So this would be this would be saying that epsilon, uh, and of course depends on some degree. So there's a there's some variable. Um, so there's this this whole thing weighted by this curve has a certain degree, which you hear here the degree is measured by you know how many of this collapsed component I have. So there's a there's a there's a weight which is you know q to the q to the d where d is the degree. So epsilon d by d lambda, where lambda 
So it's, it's a connection with the base this. So lambda is an element in H upper 2. And if you differentiate such function, here D is an element. D is an element. D is a degree. So D is an element in H lower 2 of X set. So when you differentiate such function with respect to D by D lambda of such function, well, that's uh, just your pair lambda with D times Q to the D. And so this is you, you, this function psi equals equals the following thing. First, in my Lie algebra, so, so sorry, in my in my in my UQ, I have an element which is like the variable times this. So, it, so it's like loops in here. We, we're doing we're doing loops in this. So there's an element which is like sort of pick u times lambda. In other words. Concretely, it says some particular matrix coefficient which you have to extract, not the u, not the one over u term, but one over u squared term. Plus, maybe, maybe minus the weight of of my symplectic form. So this is the log. It's like log q. In so in cohomology, this is everything you have to you have to work in Lie algebra according to the logarithm of that times summation over all roots, pair of lambdas alpha, and then q alpha minus minus q to the alpha, times the invariant tensor times, I'll just write it like this, e minus alpha, e alpha, you know, i, i, meaning, meaning the, the, the alpha and the minus alpha root spaces, they're paired. And so there's an invariant tensor in the product of the two, which I take put stick here. This is why it's called Casimir connection times psi. Well, in K theory, well, you can guess this become, well, it's kind of, kind of, kind of not, it took us a long time to guess the analog of this in K theory. And, um, and the right thing to do right is that this, of course, this, this sum is going to become an infinite product. And this shift would be, so here, here of course, the statement would be psi of, uh, of you know, t times whatever, q, something like that, some shift like that. Uh, this will be something. And then, uh, but this will be an infinite, it will be, this will be a product, sorry, not infinite, depends on what your algebra is. So it will be a product. And, uh, and in fact, of, sorry, fi locally finite product. It will be a locally finite product. And, um, uh, <sighs> complicated stuff. So, um, but point is, so maybe going back to geologists, is this uh, is this something? There's something you can characterize, something you can actually compute this way. And and things like and things like this. Remember, I've um, I had uh, I had the line. How the same, how different threefold can sit inside the same, in the same, um, the same fivefold. So an example of that would be that if I have some cur base curve B, and over that I have a vibration by A N surface cross A M surface. This can be certainly made to be a Calabi-Yau fivefold. And I can make my C star act either here or there. And so my, my x could be, one of my x's could be this. Another version for the x could be that. This one x, so to speak, x1, maybe x and x check. And so, and so then says that the same object has some kind of dual role in which, in which the, the equivalent variable for one becomes the sort of degree variable for the other. And the, and the, the reflection of this duality in, in these difference equations is that here we wrote the difference equations in the, in the variables q, what's being shifted are this variable. But commuting with them are difference equations in the equivalent variables. 
And what happens is, is as you go, what happens in this slope, in this, you know, in this exchange, is the Kähler variable becoming the equivalent for the other. And what you see is you have uh, like an extra head over things which are very familiar for conformal field theory and others, namely the level rank duality. Level rank duality tells you that, that without this extra head, there's a, there's a, a consistent action of, of GLM hat and GLM hat on, on one and the same space. And here's with the two hat, you had, you had from coming from two sides, you have, uh, you have uh, you know, two systems of difference equations that commute with each other and have the meaning of, of, um, of the, well, they want, in one variable they change this degree variable, and the, and the, other, the other ones change the, change the current parameters, and that's, uh, and that's how you see, how you see this, I mean, how you see concretely this duality manifest itself is, is, um, is in this, you know, this, well, that's the representation theoretic, whatever, manifestation of that. All right, well, I'm one minute later, I'll stop here. Well, because, <coughs> In cohomology, you, you, cohomology of, so in cohomology, this story exists. But, right, but if you, if you want connections to five-dimensional theory or different connection between DT things, then, then you must go to K-theory, otherwise just the variables don't match. Because in, in covariant cohomology, the covariant, if you can in cohomology, then the covariant variable have the meaning there in the Lie algebra. Whereas the Keller variable, they're sitting in the torus. And so they're just, just completely different things. I mean, not completely, but, but you've, uh, you can, you see, so this, if, if you want something that exchanges Keller variable for covariant variable, it has to be the case that your covariant variable also sit in, in a torus. So it's less symmetric. Yeah. So only any, 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 anything like this. So I mean, this, is, this whole thing is perfectly well defined in cohomology, but it's less symmetric and it's somehow it's less, and, 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 and like I said, if you want that connection with 5D, for example, you have to, you have to do it case. Can, uh, can you solve uh, some of these, equa these equations or not? Uh, or in, in what sense? Well, in this, I mean, uh, is it better? So some of this, so, so this, this, so this, this, this equation, this equation can compare and contrast to uh, KZ equations. In fact, they come somehow together paired with KZ equations. And this is how you, how you, in fact, you prove, how you prove that this is the right equation, is you prove that so you first construct some difference equation geometrically, and then you prove it commutes with, with a suitable KZ equation. Now, with the KZ equations, you can write solutions, you can write solutions like, you know, like a whole, like a big integral of like with a product of some kind of Q gamma functions under it. So if you, you know, look at uh, many people, most not what, what, what uh, Varshnik in particular springs to mind as, as, as like a king of this sort of thing. So uh, in that sense, you can also, the similar representation, you can also write for this, but it, it will be slightly tautological in that, uh, that if you take that integral, you compute it by residues, you get exactly this picture. So this is, be, it will be, it's not like you have a, you know, you can get some mileage out of this, but not, not, not a whole lot of mileage. What would be nice is to have, a, is to have like a mirror symmetry statement saying that this, this integral, in fact, represents something bigger. You know, you can some, some other way. Like, like I would say, the similar, this is, this sort of equations in, 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 in you know, back in, in, in the old days would be called quantum differential equation. And the statement, the, back in the older days, Quantum <laughs> story. We still call it quantum differential equation. And even somehow, it's not. It's not like so. So that the fact that 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 uh, that uh, a quantum differential equation can be solved by periods of some of some like a, like a holomorphic form. That's a statement of like mirror symmetry. And so, and, and this has this has uh, both computational but also philosophical value. And and the similar. And the similar philosophical value here is, is, is I would say, it's not, it's not completely there. Because, mainly because you, there's, no, it's not, there's no good way to assign, to assign 
Yeah, the, like this particular, this variable, which is the crucial variable, there's like no good way to assign the meaning of the variable on the, on the mirror side. So you can, you can look, so there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a pretty <laughs> you know, exciting yet cryptic paper by Zeidel and Solomon, they've, uh, where, they've, uh, where they were sort of tried to attach this kind of dilation, <laughs> yeah, yeah the, on the supplectic yeah, side, yeah, what would be, that yeah, yeah. In the lecture series here, <laughs> last year, or two years, yeah. two years ago. Yeah. Right, so it's a, it's a, so, so how, I mean, to bridge, to, to make, to somehow, it'd be great to somehow take this, whatever, Barnes slash Varchenko slash many other people integrals, and somehow bridge it to that, that'd be, it'd be great, but it's, uh, but, uh, you know, somehow it's lots of work to be uh, to be remains to be done. Yeah, this is I don't. Kind of a random question. Yeah. Is, is there any connection here with this with the integral systems? Because uh, our matrices do show up. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, so so if you have a well, what's a what's an integrable system? If you have an so this could be, if it's okay if I take like a a minute yeah. to answer to your question. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll ask <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, this is sometimes you open the Pandora box and then you do, oh, no, 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 I'm, uh, you know, maybe next time. <laughs> so, so how does this work? So if I have a, I have a solution of young Baxter equation, I suppose, uh, so if I have a, um, so, so that, so, so if you have a solution of young Baxter equation, R, then, then in particular, any element in the, in, in the Lie algebra here, any element here, will commute with, with that. So that will commute with sort of, you know, for this will commute with exponential xi, tensor exponential xi, for any, for any xi. And as a consequence of that, you take trace over your auxiliary space, exponential xi acting on it, tensor 1, times the R matrix. So this is now an operator in your physical space, and maybe R matrix of U. So this commute, this operator's commute, it follows immediately from young bus, so this commute, commute for all, for all U. So they give you a family of commuting operators here. This is, this is how, this is Baxter's trick. This is why it's called Baxter. And so now, what's the meaning of this? The meaning of this: these are the, these are the, if you if you do it in, if you do it, uh, uh, if you do it in, um, for find the mesh representation of a, of a, of a, like a semi-simple Lie algebra, what you're going to find, you're going to find this this Baxter style integrals of motions for the corresponding spin chain, where the parameter xi has the meaning of, so if you have a spin chain, and, and you can make it periodic with, with a twisted boundary condition. That is, as you, go, as you go around the circle, your spin gets twisted by exactly this thing. So this, are this, this is a, for, 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 um, for G fine and dimensional, this is our Baxter style. Baxter style for things which you have in like, you know, there was a spin chain, and if you go around, there's a transformation xi. Now you can ask, what is the, what is the corresponding? This is, this is an integrable, this is a quantum integrable system, no matter, no matter what origin of this R matrix. And this, this space, if this, if this all element is chosen judiciously, this trace will converge even if V1 is an infinite dimensional thing. And so if you take, so I can ask, if you take my favorite Lie algebra, GL1, so if you take, you know, Yang and say of this Lie algebra, so what's the corresponding integrable system? And the corresponding integrable system is a quantum analog, because this is a quantum integrable system, it's operators, quantum analog of this intermediate long wave equation, where, where xi has the meaning of the depth of the water. <laughs> and so, and, uh, uh, and the somehow further, 
it, it, it somehow it boggles my mind to think about what's going to happen if I take a quiver with some wild quiver. What, what, what sort of thing's going to happen? But it, is, it, is, it does give you some integral I mean, People knew that classically, people knew that, how to, that classically this is integrable. The fact that this is quantum integrable, I don't know, I think it somehow comes out of this construction. It also gives you a spectrum of it. Because this whole construction not only gives you integrable things, it also gives you a spectrum. So it gives you a spectrum of the quantum ILW, which, which, I don't know, the only person, the only person who cares about such things, I think, is Wigman. I uh, communicated the spectrum to him, and I don't know, maybe he'll find some applications, but uh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> so.